Greetings, dear friends. Welcome to the Creative Lab Awakening the Souls of Our Nations. I welcome you on behalf of the 2025 initiative, together with the Hikal group from Jerusalem and the Klench Kali group from Germany. Today is our last meeting in this season. We will go on vacation. I'm sure we will talk more about it. And thank you for joining us. Now is circle, continuing our exploratory work. Over to you, Uta. Can you hear me now? Yes, we Hello? can hear you. Yes. yes, okay. Hello, friends. Welcome, everyone, to this Thank Cancer you. Nations Lab session. In the Nations Lab, spiritual students from many nations come together every month as a council of elders in training. We practice skills which may be required for the personnel of a soul-guided United Nations of the future. And we address different world issues. So today, our theme is the Middle East as an evolving entity. In the work today, we will follow more or less the same procedure as we did in the previous sessions for Europe and for the USA. In the same, uh, continuing our present experimentation in the lab, making the thinkable also feelable. And we do this by letting the entity speak for itself in first person. When we started our work with the Middle East, we quickly saw that uh, this wasn't so easy in this case. And uh, maybe Helen. Yeah, and uh, say a few things about really it. not easy. We realized that um, the Middle East uh, still isn't a yet defined sense of self. So the one who will be speaking is a personality on the making, trying to integrate its great number of sub-personalities. The Middle East is a large and very volatile area. Also, the time span of this land is so vast and varied with a history going back to several thousand, seven thousand years, we cannot possibly cover the whole tapestry in this format. So we ask, we uh, apologize beforehand for a sketchy historical picture. The fact of the present Gaza war makes the focus on the Middle East even more complex and charged and important. So we offer here in all humility that which we have been able to grasp of the complexity of this development of consciousness of this large, large ancient world. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. We, <laughs> we do and, our best. Um, yes. <laughs> um, and like we did in the previous session, we will again gather in the council chamber and prepare the space for the Middle East and listen to its address, address, 
and then take it into receptive silence. In this way, we may approximate one more step, the proceeding in the general assembly of a future UN. Just to remind ourselves, the council chamber is our place in which we hold space for collective entities and then reflect on them together. And in this process, we practice transforming conflict into creative tension, as Asa Jolie calls it, which is actually the culture of diplomacy, the art of discourse, which is the forte of the fourth ray. We practice getting to know in an experienceable way these different pieces of the international puzzle, each time looking at one puzzle piece. So eventually they may gel in our consciousness into a planetary perspective. Yeah, so let us now convene in our council chamber of elders in training and meet the Middle East as an evolving collective entity. And let us listen, listen to it, both with our ears and our heart. And for those who feel more comfortable reading along while listening, uh, we have prepared the text. You can find the link uh, in the chat box. Okay. So let us withdraw the attention into inner stillness. Breathing, grounding in our body, and grounding in the earth. Collecting our consciousness into the center of the head. Standing in the love and freedom of our soul. Opening our consciousness to the call for planetary psychosynthesis. And following this call, let us now make our way to the beautiful building set in nature, which we already know well. entering into the quiet and clear and spacious council chamber of elders in training. Taking our places as delegates in the light of the soul of our nation. In geometric order,
sensing the atmosphere in the chamber, the privilege of it, the geometrical harmony that we together share. In the center of the chamber, visualize the flame, the flame of our combined sustained will to love. And tune our hearts to it. Getting a sense of us holding together this space of intent sustained love. And tuning now into the mental space of the council chamber. A calm, clear, lighted space. It vibrates to the rate of the Ajna center of the planet. And through this vibration, we are linked with our fellow world workers in all nations. And now holding our shared lighted space stable and being aware of the four great Deva beings helping us to do so. One at each direction, at the north, south, east and west. Having prepared the space, we now invite the representative of the Middle East. My name is Levant. My name used to be Levant, the rising sun before foreign powers called me Middle East. I am ancient indeed, and yet I am still confused and not well put together at all. I will try to convey to you my dynamic history in order to hopefully understand together who I am. I can recognize three different stages in the development of my consciousness. Let's call them the magical, the religious, and the national stage. Imagine my land, it lies west of the Mediterranean Sea, at the crossroads of Asia, Europe, and Africa. The rich Mesopotamian soil fed by the fluvial Euphrates and Tigris, and down to the waterways of the Niles was called the Fertile Crescent, Al Jazeera bright, green and golden, generous and hospitable. 
It has been home to agriculture and trade and has bestowed its riches on the kaleidoscope of cultures which have passed over, over it for 5,000 years. It has been the cradle of many great ancient civilizations. The Sumerians, the Egyptians, the Persians, the Babylonians, Assyrians, and more. I imagine the land as a clean slate with each culture and civilization adding its imprint upon it in a continual process of building and destroying, building and destroying, like children trying out different shapes and colors. Nature was all embracing in this Garden of Eden, providing the livelihood and the spiritual guidance to the families and tribes living in it. Bloodlines were the thread of connectivity. At the end of this uh, period, some of these strong streams consolidated into distinct parts of the land. They are called today Egypt, Iran, and Turkey. I call them civilization states as they have a distinguishable sense of self. While the central part of the land remained undefined, loosely populated, tribal in character, In this region, a new impulse, and with it, a new period was born. It became the cradle of the three monotheistic religions. Abraham, born in Mesopotamia, had an encounter with uh, uh, what was for him the one God who guides all human destiny. His descendants, the Hebrews, and later the Jewish people, followed the voice of this one God. They developed a powerful religion around it, with writings and many, many laws. A magnificent temple was constructed on Mount Moriah in the land of Palestine and a city was built around it, Jerusalem, the city of peace. When it crystallized this impulse, Jesus of Nazareth challenged the religious establishment. He demanded to do away with all these laws and just keep one, Love thy neighbor as thyself. This message was rejected by the Jews. They remained stuck in their old and exclusive ways. The surrounding tribes, which may have been included under this growing new impulse, were left without direction. Shortly later, the Jews were swept away by the Romans who expanded their empire throughout the whole Eastern Mediterranean garden. But the teaching of Jesus got adopted in Rome and was re-imported into the land as the religion of Christianity. The city of Constantinople has been built as a second center of Christianity. It flourished for several centuries until political differences developed between the two centers, Rome and Constantinople. This was the beginning 
of the field tension between East and West, which sadly exists until this day. As Constantinople declined, a new power filled the, vac the vacuum, Islam. Through a young man from the Arabian Peninsula, Muhammad, a new religious call was voiced. God is great, Allahu Akbar, and humans come to him through surrender. This call had the full force of the incoming sixth reign. It suited the character of the loose tribes and expanded very fast, creating an Arab empire which controlled most of the Mediterranean area, Mediterranean Sea area. Islam was adapted, adopted <laughs> by both the tribes and the societies in the region as the final version of monotheistic faith. The golden age of Islam flourished for six centuries, making significant contributions to science, philosophy, literature, and art, until it fell into decadence due to inner disputes over the form of leadership between uh, branches of Islam, two branches of Islam, the Shiites and the Sunnis. This discord unfortunately prevails until today. While in the magical stage, nature and bloodlines provided the main connective tissue. Now, it was mainly religious adherence and a patriarchal hierarchy. And this is what held the people together. A Muslim Arabic civilization was in the making. While intruders overran the land in the following centuries, the Turks and the Mongols, its basic ethnic and religious character prevailed and spread over the following centuries. Also Christianity, which reappeared in the land in the form of the Crusades over three centuries, did not succeed to drive Islam back or reestablish even a foothold in Western Asia. Under the following 600 years long rule of the Turkish Ottoman Empire, the Muslim culture in Western Asia further consolidated. So we have now a Muslim identity firmly, undoubtedly established in the Middle East. And we are getting to the beginning of the century, of the 20th century. It's marked the next step in the development of consciousness of the area. Oil was discovered on my land. And this brought a new player onto the stage, Europe. Oil was needed by the Europeans for their growing industrial revolution and for their war machines of the First World War. European influence began to fill the vacuum that the declining Ottoman Empire left in the land. Secret agreements between France and Britain carved up the territory into spheres of influence under their control. The newly founded League of Nations ratified these agreements 
and thereby, and thereby decided upon the destiny of the lands. It awarded the right to the great winning powers of the world war to divide the spoils among them with no respect or understanding whatsoever of the peoples, their cultures, or their ethnicities. Western Asia, the Middle East, as it was now called by the Western powers, got parceled into random segments to please the whim and wealth of foreigners. The West enforced its more advanced social structure, a national structure, on a still mainly tribal population. And new states were formed by elevating prominent Arab families like the Hashemites to rule as kings over different regions. In this way, the states of Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Iraq, Kuwait, Qatar, and the United Arab Emirates, Syria, and Lebanon were created. Egypt, as well as Palestine, became British protectorates. The civilizational states of Iran and Turkey were manipulated as well by Western forces, but to a lesser degree. They had more backbone to withstand the foreign influence. It took a few decades for the newly created states to organize themselves and revolt against their creators and begin achieve independence. An important milestone was the foundation of the Arab League in 1945 under the lead of Egypt. It brought into an alliance the newly created non-civilizational states, Iraq, Lebanon, Saudi Arabia, Syria, Jordan, and Yemen, and attracted many more members later on. This marked the beginning of a next step in terms of consciousness. From tribes, to religion, to nations, to a regional cultural identity. Ethnicity and religion continued to play a major role, but now the overall thread of connectivity became national administration. While this development marked an important achievement, I am saddened by the fact that it was accompanied by endless struggles that continue to this day. The area of Palestine did not get organized into a nation. It remained in a tribal mode under the control of the British. After World War II, due to the Holocaust, large waves of Jewish immigrants arrived on Palestinian shores. In their despair, having lost all, they looked for ref refuge in the land which once was theirs. Zionism, the yearning to return to the promised land, had been a slowly growing idea among Jews in response to the increasing anti-Jewish sentiments in the West. This idea now turned into a massive immigration movement by a broken people.
the British supported the establishment of a national home in Palestine for the Jewish people. They partitioned the land into Jewish, into a Jewish and a Palestinian area. The young United Nations ratified it. The native Palestinians rose up in protest. The declaration of the State of Israel in 1948 sparked fierce Arab nationalism. This started the terrible violent conflict between the new Jewish immigrants and the local Arab population, which sadly persists till today. The declaration of the State of Israel, which marked hope for the Jews, became Nakba, catastrophe for the Palestinians. So, modern Middle history began now to be shaped by oil, by oil wealth, by the Israel-Palestinian conflict, and by the rise of Arab nationalistic and Muslim religious extremism. Violence rose in the area. Anxious for support, both the young Israel and the Arab states turned to the new superpowers which emerged from World War II, the USA and the Soviet Union. The Middle East became a theater of the Cold War, which developed between these two poles. The world now was beginning to be, def be defined in terms of communist capitalist, east-west, developed world, and third world. Israel was armed by the United States of America. Syria and Egypt was armed by the Soviet Union. In the 50s and 60s, another call to Arab unit, unity was issued out of Egypt. The president, Gamal Abdel Nasser, initiated a movement to unite the Arab peoples into one pan-Arab entity emphasizing national and cultural identity. It was an integrating moment for the budding Arab sense of self. The movement advocated for sovereignty and independence for the Arab nations. It sparked a cultural and intellectual revival, promoting literature and the arts. A new Arab self-respect was growing. This stage may perhaps be seen as uh, the one of young adulthood. The common ground holding the Arabs together was their hostile opposition against Israel. It was from the very beginning a constant source of friction. Israel, a Jewish enterprise, was and is a curious mixture of an ancient civilization and a young democracy molded on Western values. Its insertion into a tribal and sectarian environment was bound to be problematic. And more so, Israel's forcefulness and arrogance towards the native Palestinians aroused their anger and their hostility. The aggravation come came to a devastating head for the Arabs in 1967, in the war of 1967, in which Israel conquered Arab territories, the Sinai from Egypt, the Golan Heights from Syria, and Jerusalem from Jordan. 
the Palestinian territories on the west bank of the Jordan River and the Gaza Strip on the border with Egypt became occupied territories. Everything that the Arabs had built in terms of their sense of self and their newly gained national pride collapsed in one blow. It spelled the end of the Arab nationalistic movement. The territorial losses brought up questions about the effectiveness of the Arab political leadership. Strife began again among different Arab states over many issues. Shia clerical Iran and Sunni monarchic Saudi Arabia competed in pursuit of regional hegemony. This power struggle kept the Arab people polarized. On the Israeli side, the massive land gains woke up in parts of the Jewish population the dream to reestablish the land of biblical times, the greater Israel. While other parts of Israeli society were ready to return those lands for restoring peace. But lo, the hardliners won out. And now the young country had to deal with a hostile Arab population within these annexed and occupied lands. The survivors of the Holocaust now became occupiers. This fatal decision started the hardship, hardship and violence on all sides, which still goes on till today. There was an oasis of light when in 1979, Egypt and Israel concluded a peace agreement. A spark of right relations between the two people. The same thing happened with Jordan. Then very recently, the Abrahamic agreements with Saudi Arabia, a spark of hope. Now, there is the Gaza war. Another wave of terrible violence with unspeakable loss of life and destruction. And so it goes on and on. My land remains destabilized, a festering, festering wound with perpetual waves of violence. The sacredness of human life remains in constant violation. In this ongoing tragedy, how can I grow into a healthy sovereign being? I dare to cautiously point out a development in a hopeful direction. <clears throat> Last year, the Arab League readmitted Syria into the alliance after a decade of isolation. Also, since last year, the two regional powers, Iran and Saudi Arabia, are back on speaking terms after their long enmity. And if this cooperation will hold, it may provide a new basis for finally addressing the acute Palestine-Israel issue. Ah, may the Arab states rise to the occasion. However, it is clear that the local forces cannot sort out this conflict by themselves, since it is not only a local problem, 
After decades of sta stalemate, there is now a sense of a new hope that foreign forces may act as a trustworthy broker who will support a process of integrating all parties into a regional solidarity. May states outside of the West, part of the so-called global majority, and many of those states are turning their attention to this conflict, especially the BRICS members that have started to play a helpful role. They make concerted diplomatic efforts to bring the local parties together around one table in the most unlikely combinations. At the moment, an agreement is being forged among the BRICS countries and the Arab states. In a joint standpoint, a joint standpoint is being worked out. It is in essence the Arab peace proposal from many years ago. A sovereign Palestinian state within the 1967 borders with East Jerusalem as its capital. Oh, this proposal is completely unacceptable for Israel. But the other option to embrace the occupied Palestinians to live together in one state with the Israelis is even less acceptable for most Israelis and Palestinians. It seems that the time has finally come when Israel is being pushed to decide one way or the other. The global political pressure, the economical siege, the ongo ongoing violence around and within leaves Israel now with its back against the wall. Short of coercion and violent conflict, what can be done to integrate the old new Jewish dweller into the Arab Middle East? How can the two peoples put up with each other after all that has happened? How can this rift heal? Must they go back all the way to the ancient times of Abraham to heal the relationship between his two sons, Yitzhak and Ishmael? Or can a new vision simply dawn on the two people, recognizing their common roots, learning to live together in mutual respect, in religious tolerance, and a common economy of well being on eye level? So far, Israel, the Jewish enterprise, is seen only as a liability and a threat in the Middle East. Can the Arabs have a better look? With a humbled Israel learning the lessons of respect and right relations, could we imagine the possibility of integration? With a rapidly consolidating Muslim Arab world, the power balance might even out. Could that be an opportunity towards cooperation? Could I dare to imagine this possibility? How could Israel be made to feel safe? so that it may let go of being a Western stronghold 
and live side by side with the Palestinians in its home in the Middle East. If I take a moment to imagine this almost unimaginable possibility, I realize that integration and cooperation between these two archetypal warring brothers may well be the missing piece for the Middle East to, be, to become a harmonious and prosperous area. It could be a middle nation between the East and the West, bringing together a Western brilliant mind and an Oriental livingness and generosity demonstrating and initiating the raising of humanity's focus from the solar plexus struggle to a heart-centered inclusive world. May the Arab tent be big enough to invite their Jewish brother into it. And may this long lost brother share his light with them as they will share their fruits with him. Let the silence now settle in the council chamber. Holding space for that which has been received. Just listening to our inner response. And now, letting go of all that is known, expanding our consciousness, connecting with our higher co-workers, raising, raising everything up, tuning into the ashramic thought field, just making ourselves empty receptive to a higher inspiration and a deeper understanding of the Middle East. Making space for the new.
and linking up now with the divine plan and holding just another minute of silent receptive contemplation on that part of the divine plan which seeks expression through the Middle East as we move forward into the new era. And gently now bringing down any new inspiration or understanding into our council chamber. Let it consolidate in our group mind. And having done our work, let us release now the Middle East with a blessing and collecting ourselves fully into the council chamber, remaining for another moment in each other's presence just resting and replenishing in our refined shared space. Cherishing this beautiful space, precious, that we are holding together. Okay, when we are ready, 
Let us open our eyes and perhaps note down our impressions in preparation for our sharing. Okay, so let us open the floor now for the sharing of our impressions, keeping the meditative attitude and trying to be brief and synthetic. Let us speak slowly and also hold a moment of silence after each sharing so it can settle into our shared space. Let me, this is Martha, Canada, United States. Let me express great gratitude for the wisdom in the presentation. There was a palpable transmutation from polarization. There was also a great sensitivity to the possibilities that are doable. So my takeaway is to intensify alignment with the wisdom of this transmutation so that whatever energy I can contribute to the center in this council becomes amplified toward the vision that was offered. Thank you so much. Thank you, Martha. This is Margot from Canada. Dear Deva of Mesopotamia, with respect and compassion, I welcome you to this council chamber. May the peoples under your wing awaken to forgiveness and cooperation as they may as they move forward thank you marco Dearest one, 
I use your first name, Levant Rising Sun. I hear the exhaustion and so much pain in your voice. And I know the pain that a mother feels when her children are divided. Brothers and sisters whose needs to be unique shadow the truth of their deep connection. You wonder if this might ever find resolution and conceive at last a loving family which honors and celebrates the wholeness that can be created together. I hold this intention in the heart of the United States of America. And I stand beside you, supporting you, and holding hope that a new fertile crescent, rich in loving relationship, will be birthed and settled with grace into a new cradle of true civilization. Thank you very much, inshallah. This is a flat from Jerusalem. Thank you, Helen, for awakening these ancient memories of this place, our place, as a possible seed for the future. Thank you. Thanks, Efrat. This is Deborah from the United States with such deep gratitude for the depth and beauty and wisdom that you brought forward with the voice of Levant and the soul of Levant. and the feminine Davic nature of that beautiful 
presence on the planet that exudes power and love, wisdom, transcendence, manifestation, somehow the feminine heart of Levant will bring forward into the light of now and the future to dissolve the warring legacy of the brothers within the mother's heart of Levant, thereby to bless humanity. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. This is Gretel from Denmark. Helen, thank you for this report. It's, uh, I'm lack of words in the, because it was so rich. And uh, I felt the magic in your words, Helen. <clears throat> It was so special. And I was thinking of how it all started, the two brothers, Isaac and Ismail, bringing those brothers together, go back to the, uh, to the roots of this uh, violence and this war. Helen, thank you. Thank you, Greta. Eros leavened rising sun. With deep, deep gratitude, I followed uh, you taking us to this long journey, beautiful journey, but not easy one. And with each step, each of yourselves express the longing for a new chapter, for a new chapter to be written. We are longing with you. It is not only your story, it is somehow humanity's story that you are mirroring us. And to me came the words of the crucified man from Nazareth, who, saw, who said, see the human. And he said, Father, forgive them, because they don't know what they do. May we all together with you, rising sun, let this sun rise over a new chapter of humanity and may we all together work for a conscious and caretaking humanity. Thanks for your effort and thanks for your strength to bring us up to this point. I'm deeply, deeply grateful grateful. Thank you. Beautiful, Sabina. Thank you.
This is Jonathan uh, from Portugal. Deep gratitude. Thank you, Levant, rising sun. And to Hechal for your courage for bringing through a voice and a vision of an integrating psychosynthetic self upon a new path of harmony through synthesis. There is a purpose working out here from ancient origins towards an extraordinary fut future, a rising star, a blue star of wisdom, of Sophia Christ, the wisdom of pure love, pure reason, that can and will inspire humanity as a whole. May we say, the waters of life for Aquarius now be anchored in the presence in the center of the Middle East. Aquarius, a group sign, free of the grasping of sixth ray monotheistic ownership, transmuting into sovereign autonomy between men and women and their collective stewardship by the people of the sacred. These lands are sacred. Every human life is sacred. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan, for the inspiring Thank you, Jonathan. I, I must confess that um, all this sharing brings me uh, into a state, an emotional state, and right now I'm crying, so thank you so much. This is Kate from the United States. Thank you all so much. Like Helene, I am very emotional to this presentation and the clarity is so very pure. One thing that is very clear is that a tremendous amount of forgiveness is needed. And great grief is involved in the healing that we all are invoking to occur. May those souls who have through many lifetimes integrated such experiences assist in the transmutation that is required for this new path we are invoking to be traversed. Thank you. Thank you, Kay. Thank you. Yeah, inshallah. There is a message from Ben uh, that I reposted in the chat. I will read it. There is Avramabad, triangle hovering over the Middle East, 
composed of Sufi, Kabbalist, and Coptic masters working for the end of the war. Abraham's children, right relations restored. Mm. Thank you, Bart. Good to know. This is Anette from Denmark. We are all crying for your hardship and um, we all wish for the Middle East, for the sun to rise again, for forgiveness, cooperation and friendship. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you, Anetta. Hi, this is Jill from Britain. Thank you very much for this touching presentation of your suffering. It's to be hoped now that you, the people directly involved, will be allowed to meet together with a view to finding a peaceful solution without interference from other countries that aren't really involved in the suffering. So we can only wish you well. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thanks, Jill. There is another message uh, that I posted from Karen. Thank you for this beautiful presentation and important historic perspective of this archetypal struggle between two brothers as we all seek to mend the bonds of love between all brothers and sisters.
think you have not heard me. So I will just repeat what I just said. Thank you everyone for this rich sharing. And let us hold now as a family of nations, the Middle East and our reflection in our group chalice. Another moment for allowing the process of absorption, transmutation and expression. Standing now, these offerings to the Middle East as gifts on the way. And offering our work back up to the divine plan. Okay, we would like to invite you also to our Middle East Vigil. Helen, maybe you would like to say a few words about it. Yeah, we hold this, uh, the Middle East Vigil and Meditation for the Middle East every Monday at the same time as now. Uh, like, uh, I don't know what time it is at each one of your places. And um, for getting some uh, information uh, uh, from the ground before we meditate, we hear one of us who live uh, in the area and then a meditation for the area and uh, it extends then much more than the area but it's based on the on 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 our focus in the middle east i think that um sasha put the link in the chat box so you're welcome to uh, to take a look at it. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, yeah. we'll meet. Yeah. Yeah. It's a vigil that we have started um, in response to to the Gaza war in October, and we continue this focus every week keeping up this this light transmission and space for transmutation okay 
And um, as Alexander has already said, we will have one month of summer break, summer retreat. And uh, in Leo, I don't remember when, when, was, when is the date, but uh, the Tuesday closest to the, to the Leo full moon will be our next Nations Lab session, and it will be on Russia. Okay, so thank you again, everyone. Heart to heart, yeah, it's really felt our heart connection. So, all the best and see you in two months. Bye bye, friends. Bye bye. Oh. Hmm. Hmm.